People like to think of the British countryside as a safe place to live. However, as I have found, the reality can be quite different. Theft, armed trespass and poaching are all happening in rural Britain. And most people do not understand the severity of these crimes. Hair coursing, where dogs are used to chase and catch hares, has been banned across England and Wales. Hair coursing is illegal in England, Scotland and Wales. They destroy crops with 4 by 4s and it can be far more sinister. Run me, run me. Three dogs. Hair. There's three dogs. I've got a hair. Yeah, we need the police. People are threatened, property is destroyed, land is damaged, and animals are killed in an uncontrolled and potentially cruel manner. The persona of a poacher in many people's eyes is a romanticised ideal of what a poacher should be. It's an old man on a bicycle looking to take one pheasant to feed his poor family. First, make sure no one's about, especially one of Lordy's keepers. That is not real. It's a Dickensian ideal of what the author thinks a poacher should be. And I'll tell you something else. Never in the whole of my life have I ever killed just for the sake of killing. Poachers are organised, violent, criminals who cause havoc in the countryside, threaten people, intimidate people and cause damage. It goes a lot further than just poaching. These violent criminals will also be scoping out other things on the land as they're committing their poaching acts. They'll be looking where diesel tanks are to steal the diesel at a later date, looking for infrastructure, quad bikes will get stolen and more often than not if you confront them they'll come back and barns will be burnt down. I have been threatened, yeah. When you tend to corner them, they will threaten you or shout abuse out the window or wave a catapult, as in to suggest that maybe they're going to start catapulting at you. Yeah, you try not to get in confrontations with them for, for that reason. Well, we suffer from all sorts of poaching problems here, from roadside catapulting to nighttime hair coursing and deer coursing. Normally just before dark, five in the car, windows wound down. They're trying to spot pheasants and partridges in the edge of the roads or on gateways. They're stopping and catapulting or using air rifles, which is obviously a, a nuisance to us. And the hare coursing, that can be uh, mostly at night time. They come on and try and get onto the ground with vehicles to chase hares. They uh, cause a lot of damage to the crops. Uh, Obviously, they can also betting money on, on, on hair coursing. I have been threatened with them in the past. I know a lot of keepers around here that have been threatened with them. Or quite often, when they've almost caught them, they'll come back a day or two later and catapult out your car windows or your truck windows. So, um, yeah, they're, they're intimidating to try and stop you from going after them. That's always the problem when you're confronting these poachers because they tend to know where the keeper lives. And so they always tend to have come back and do some sort of payback. It's worrying for my wife when I go out at night if I'm going to get cornered like that by them. You know, they've got no scruples, these guys. They're just out for their kicks, really. They don't really care about nature at all. And nature suffers. I feel that I should be out there looking for poachers um, and stopping it. Obviously the police try and help when they can. If we have a, a lot of trouble, uh, they tend to set up an operation in the area. But there's not enough of them really. They're covering a large area um, and quite often the time they get out here, they're long gone. Over the last um, five to six years, is poaching is one of our top five crimes. Um, we'll see criminal damage, uh, thefts from farms and rural premises. I am um, PC Mark Jackson. I'm one of the officers on the Rural Crime Team at Wiltshire Police. 
The most common we see in Wiltshire is hair coursing, is, is predominantly the, the main one. We will have little bits of um, uh, deer poaching as well, which can be done with rifles or firearms uh, and dogs as well, but we're also seeing a slight increase in fish poaching as well. We treat um, rural crime the same way we would treat any crime in an urban area really. So um, we approach it in the same way and try to work with the communities, work with partner agencies uh, and we take it very seriously. Wiltshire Police is quite a small force compared to many others across the country. Um, and so currently we have four officers who are dedicated full time to rural crime. That's one sergeant and three PCs. We then also work in partnership with other agencies such as the MOD police or other agencies such as the NGO and NFU. So time wise, it takes up quite a lot for us as a team. Our main purpose every day is dealing just purely with rural crime and the majority of that is um, poaching really. There's probably many, many driving factors for people going poaching. The, the most obvious one that would stick out to most people is, is potentially for food sources. Um, that probably nowadays in a modern society where food re realistically is quite easy to come by and quite cheap in some, in some areas um, is, is, is bygone now really. So the main driving force probably behind most is a, is a blood sport and the enjoyment of going out and chasing things and seeing them killed or um, a monetary gain. Uh, there's not much money in chasing hares per se because you're not going to get any money for your hair. There's not much money in going and getting pheasants. But actually the betting, illegal betting that goes on around it is, is quite substantial. So um, there is information through the police forces across the county that we know there is large amounts of betting that goes on uh, and cash exchanging hands between individuals uh, involved in that. And that could be the form of a cut being run or just individuals going out between two or three um, car, car loads of males. Um, and we could be looking at prize pots of some around about £10,000 um, easily uh, in some occasions. I, I certainly, myself and us as a team, we will describe to as a gateway crime. So much the same you may look at cannabis as a gateway crime, a gateway drug to other harder drugs. Um, poaching is, is a method that will be used by those individuals who then maybe are looking at um, thefts, burglaries, um, trading standard offences. Um, uh, uh, um, you know, other types of fences out in the countryside really. Um, it gives them the ability to move around the countryside, learn the back roads, learn the byways, um, learn what soft targets may be out there in terms of buildings or farms. Um, so it's yeah quite a difficult uh, a very complex um, sort of um, crime area and, and um, it's certainly not about fluffy, fluffy bunny rabbits really. We try to work in partnership with farmers, gamekeepers, you know, anybody that works in the countryside. They are our eyes and ears essentially. Um, if they don't tell us what's going on out there, we don't know where to go and patrol. We don't know which areas to target, which vehicles to look for or, or being persistently seen out in those areas or individuals that we can then attribute to those vehicles to target um, through various policing methods. Poaching is a serious crime. It's one that often gets overlooked in the media. It's probably the most prevalent wildlife crime, but sentencing rates are low and conviction rates are even lower. Something that needs to be worked on with the CPS and the police. It's very frustrating when you see the media taking a lead on a suspected wildlife crime where something has been suspected to have gone missing in cir suspicious circumstances with no evidence, no witnesses, and no base for any reality. Whereas a poaching crime has a base, it has a victim, and there is often proper evidence gathering. A gamekeeper's role is to perform vital conservation work and environmental benefits on the estate, protect game birds and deer. It's not to police the rural environment. It's not to be a rural police officer. That's something they need help with from the authorities. Often gamekeepers will live where they work which makes it very easy for these violent criminals to attack the family home with the family inside, sometimes young children, which can be traumatic and terrifying for everybody involved. These things aren't hearsay. These things actually happened and they're fat. These are people's lives and livelihoods. A keeper who knows of this abuse all too well is Jeff Garrett. I visited him shortly after he had been a victim of one of the most personal types of rural crime. So what happened here, mate? Well, uh, this is another example of, um, you know, the uh, crime that happens on it. It's not all out in the field. Um, we can only describe as, as a couple of people that obviously have been watching my movements. Uh, and the moment I left the house, uh, they came up the drive in their vehicle, pulled onto the drive, slammed it in reverse, bash. 
you know, it just literally smashed the kennels down. Luckily, we'd got locks, padlocks on the gates um, and we'd put a roof up here to give it you know, a lot more strength at the time. And thankfully, uh, well, I mean, at the time, you know, my wife was in the house and, and she looked out the window just to see a car in the kennels and someone literally trying to rip the doors off. So she's come screaming out of the house without thinking about anything. And thankfully, you know, her presence and shouting and swearing at the guys, they literally got back in the car and drove off out on the road to, um, well, to actually the same vehicle was caught on CCTV about 20 minute, minutes later doing the same, uh, or attempting the same uh, thing at a place down the road. Wow. Um, you know, and you know, we come back and we got a frantic call off, off my wife to say what had happened and we couldn't believe it. They must have been watching us, watching my movements. This is personal. You know, this is something it's a bit, it's literally it's too close to home. Well, absolutely, you know, and I mean, what happens out in the fields is professional. That's my job. This is crosses the line to me, you know, and for someone to try and take our personal possessions, i.e. our dogs, really, really does hit at home on, on how bad crime is out here. It's hard to imagine getting that phone call that somebody has just tried to ram raid part of your home. However, this is happening countrywide. Even so, poaching remains the most prevalent crime, more so than any other and all other wildlife crime put together, including raptor persecution. However, if an allegation of raptor persecution comes to the fore, the full weight of the law is put behind it. And yet a poaching incident happens, it's written down and filed. Rural landowners and rural workers are tired. Tired of low conviction rates for poaching, tired for tiny penalties for poaching. So much so they're investing huge amounts of their own time and money into preventative measures, hard preventative measures. It seems physical prevention is the only thing these people can do. Gates, ditches, and in some instances, bringing in outside security contractors to protect their ground. We've got a trench here that um, you know, goes all the way down the side of the road, up the hill here, you know, and it's like, it's, it's two foot deep, two foot wide, and we've took the dirt from the trench and put it on top of the bank. Right? Doubles so the, the height. Yeah, so you've got, to, you've got to come over a bank to start with into a hole here. Um, has it worked? Well, it has worked at the moment, but, but you know, they always seem to find a way in. So we just have to look at what's going on and then if they find a way, then we have to block that way. It's an ongoing problem, so we just we try to keep one step ahead, you know. And it, it's costing us, you know, it's costing us a fortune, you know, just to protect our land. We estimate now we've got between five and six miles of trenches that's exactly like this, you know, this deep um, to stop people coming on here. Um, gates, we've got, um, I think we've got four double gates like the ones we've just seen here. We've got 14 single gates. We've had to take these measures just to stop it, you know, just to try and stop it. Why do you think they do it? Well, I mean, you know, when, when you speak to them, they, they say it's in their blood, you know, that's part of their life, but it's, it's illegal. You know, the, the bottom line of it, it's illegal. They haven't got permission. Hunting with dogs has become outlawed since the, the 2004 um, Act of Parliament. Um, you know, so whatever they say, it's wrong, it's illegal, they haven't got permission, you know, and we, we have to deal with it. Trespassing and committing illegal activity. Well, trespassing in pursuit of game um, is one of the ba uh, major sort of ways, um, you know, and vehicles, etc. that they come in, most of them are not taxed, not insured, not MOT'd. Do you have a registration number at all? No, they, they, have no they have no registration on the back. These people are just criminals? Well, yeah. They are, you know, they're coming out here, you know, they're, act, they're, they're, they're causing criminal damage, you know, on the, it's not just the, you know, it's not just the, the damage that they do to the crops, you know, you get four wheel drive vehicles just roaring across the field, chasing hares up and down, you know, donuts if you like, want to put it that way, you know, it, it's the cost to the corn that we lose, it's the cost of the trenches, it's the cost of the gates, you know, we, we reckon since we've start, um, start to put these measures in, that's cost the estate between 30 and 40 thousand pound. Do you get any government help? None at all. It's all private funding, just to protect our land. 
Um, you know, so it, it's, you know, and it's, like I say, it's a non-going problem that we have to face, we have to deal with. So our hair population has, you know, gone from being a nice few about to nothing, you know, and, and it's, it's so sad, you know, when, when they are part of the countryside as well. And you listen to stories, neighbouring people, neighbouring states where they've just had so much of it that the only way they can stop it is to just go out and shoot the hairs. You know, and it's a sad state of affairs that we are, that we have to take those measures, those extreme measures, to stop this problem. The laws definitely need to be looked at, definitely need to be boosted up so the punishment fits the crime. Out of all wildlife crime here in the UK, poaching is the most common. However, due to the nature of this crime, it's very hard to put a value on the damage that's been caused. What is evident though, is the distress that it's causing the people in the countryside. It's hard for many of us to understand the actual cost of poaching. However, to give you an example, if poachers come onto your farm in the middle of the night and shoot 10 deer, those 10 deer could be worth 100 pounds each just for the meat. Let alone the live price of the deer and the work that's gone in to making that a healthy herd of deer, that management and love you've put into those animals. That is the cost of poaching. The future of rural and wildlife crime is uncertain. The police are doing their best to protect rural communities from poaching and the more sinister crimes that come with it. Gamekeepers will continue to act as the unpaid and sometimes unappreciated eyes and ears of the countryside. We can only hope that the future will hold a change of policy, enabling rural people to protect their land and homes and for the police to be able to hold these criminals accountable.